my God! I thought if I peen my wetsuit, now nobody will notice. We got go! And it's educational. I learned valuable lessons in physics and gravity. I love this place. If you don't brag about it, no one will know about it. When you grow up in a small town in Newfoundland, you see the people have a sense of humor about hard times. Check, check. I turned that into a career and hit the road. Mr. Johnny Harris! Now I'm on a mission to find the funny in the places you'd least expect it. Canada's struggling small towns. Towns that are against the ropes, but hanging in there. Still laughing in the face of adversity. Welcome to Lytton, British Columbia. of the Thompson come together with the brown waters of the Fraser. What is rising is the sun. Oh, my God! Oh. Technically, it's Canada's first mixed marriage. <laughs> and not just mixed marriage, considering it's Tom and Fraser. <laughs> but here we are in Lytton, British Columbia. A town for generations defined by its location. It's the gateway to BC's interior, a rocky little town fighting to survive. Oh, my God! Hang on. Let's begin at the beginning. I went to speak to uh, Bernie Fandridge. Not only is Bernie's rafting business the largest employer in town, he's also the local expert on Lytton's glory days. Lytton was very central to, to the interior. It was the hub. He's written a book, The Majestic Thompson River. I don't want to give too much away, but it flows downhill and, spoiler alert, ends up in the ocean. <laughs> they could go up the Thompson, they could go up the Fraser and up into the interior. Before Canada was founded, Lytton found gold. A huge nugget was discovered and the word spread and that's what triggered the great gold rush of 1858. That was Lytton. That was Lytton. In fact, there was a petition here in 1867 Lytton should be the capital of British Columbia. It was right almost here. here. Yeah. That's amazing. And it became an important service town, a hub for two railways. The two national railways right here go right through town. A lot of unit trains, you know, running coal and, and sulfur and wheat. This is the economic lifeblood of the, of the, of the country. The mighty Trans-Canada twisted its way through the area and cemented Lytton's gateway status until a new highway with a funny name changed everything, the Coquihalla. Unfortunately now for Lytton, uh, people don't take the Trans-Canada as much. Of course, the new Coquihalla Highway was built its faster way to the interior. That's kind of a shame because nobody wants to, nobody wants to take the river route anymore. Nobody. I've seen salmon hitchhiking up the Coquihalla. <laughs> Since the Coquihalla, local businesses, large and small, have downsized, moved on, or shut down. But there is one super story of superstore survival. I went up to have a chat with Ken Wong at the Jade Springs Grocers, or as you guys have affectionately termed it, Ken Mert. <laughs> We got some produce over here. Yep. Office chairs. If you're looking for grass seed, you can find it over in the produce section. <laughs> Camping gear, coffee makers. This but, is like a stretcher for, for if somebody injures themselves. Yep, this is the last one. If you're looking for somewhere to keep your fresh produce, you could buy a refrigerator. You can find them in the produce section. <laughs> so what's this hidden pocket? Oh, a little Velcro oh, pocket. Oh, yeah. You can put your weed in there. I think for the cell phone or something. Cell phone? Not in that area. Sterilize you. And how long have you been in Lytton? How old are you now? I'm 30. <clears throat> By the time I'm a baby, I built this store. His unique wares and once prime Trans Canada location put Ken's kids through college. I get some canning stuff here. Yeah? Yep, I'm I got my buy... office chair here too. Is that right? I did. Ken, you're yeah. a genius. Ken was sitting pretty until the Coquihalla Highway took the traffic from here and delivered it to big box competition in the next town. Suddenly, Ken Mert was kind of lonely. Because we are middle of nowhere, we need to, need to talk here at night. Don't have the big staff. 
In fact, the only employee Ken has is his guard dog, Lin. Now look like a really friendly, but at night, this really, really mean that guy. He's a good guard dog. Oh, yeah. They... And Lin only works 38 hours a week, so Ken doesn't have to pay him benefits. <laughs> But it turns out, being the only store in the middle of nowhere also has its benefits. Put all on $5. How about $4? Come on, go down the store, they cheaper. They don't have shoes down at the other store. People, you see all the customers coming to my place like a home. OK, thank you for the good deal on the shoes. They're like a family. But your family all day, every day? That's tough, working every day. No, I think I enjoy with that. Ken said Lytton is like one big family. I think he's right. And I love my Chinese Uncle Ken. <laughs> Just the gum, please, Ken. OK. I was starting to acclimatize to a particular kind of crazy. Oh, and uh, donkey, microscope. That starts to seem normal when you're here in Lytton. Uh, and stretcher board. If I would have saw that, I would have got it. Well, it's a $12 stretcher board, of course. You had to be crazy not to buy it. Yeah. You got another one, Kenny? Oh, my God! Lytton, British Columbia, a once important location, seemed to have lost its sense of place in the world. But I was going to meet people finding new ways to make this town a destination. Like most things here, it started strangely and on the side of a highway. I had noticed beside me a 40-foot-long Winchester rifle. You can die with a gun for your country, but you can't live with a gun for your freedom. Right below the huge rifle, there's an enormous Bowie knife. And this Bowie knife is a gate to Ken Glasgow's mind. <laughs> it's this big, beautiful, bizarre museum. It's like, it's like the Guggenheim on mushrooms, is what it's like. <laughs> How many pieces you got? I got 96 pieces of art. Why do I do this? It's simply to prove I am me, a different grain of sand upon life's beach. God. Just being me, who else can I be? I'm not Elvis Presley, so I have to be me. That's brilliant. Ken built a huge motorcycle. Holy <laughs> smokes. A 10,000 pound, 24 foot long, Harley Davidson. The, the, the handlebars are 12 yeah. feet in the air. Can set the bars pretty high. <laughs> I'll take it. One thing he's got out there was two satellite dishes. <laughs> OK, OK, some of you know this one. It's a piece called Breasts. Those ultimate biological, universal, geometrical masterpieces of amazement. So he's a boob man. Ken's a boob man. Well, I'm everything, man. <laughs> I asked Ken about his creativity. As an antenna, you connect up to it, and it just hits you so fast. We're all antennas tuning in stuff that's already out there. They call it the infinite knowledge or the universal mind, and that's what it is. I just think Ken is on a wider bandwidth than the rest of us. <laughs> I think, I think Ken tunes in to AM, FM, and what the FM? Do you have tourists show up to have a, have a look? Yeah, they show up at any time. That's perfect. Everybody's like a set of cyclopedia books. It's up to you to turn the pages. That's my job, exactly. Lytton's claim to fame is that it is the hottest place in Canada. It can go up to 40 degrees here. I went to talk to Chris O'Connor. He used to be the mayor here for nine years. Chris's uh, pet project now is the hot spot, the town monument, a big concrete disc painted up, and it states that Lytton is Canada's hot spot. Uh, it was just supposed to be a normal chat. When I got there, I was treated to a four-act play out of an episode of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Hi there. Can you feel that? No, there's no kinetic energy here. And Wayne Diedrichson was there dressed up in a dressing gown with a vacuum cleaner strapped to his back. <laughs> the hot spot was gone, and they alleged it was taken by the people in the next town, Lillooet. In 1999, Lillooet raised $14,000 to buy an Environment Canada weather station so they yeah. could prove they're once and for all Canada's hot spot. We just poured 
$500 worth of concrete and put a brass pin in the middle. To say Lytton is the hottest yeah. spot of Canada. Yes, absolutely. It's like I've got a mug that says world's number one lover, so it's in writing. <laughs> <laughs> Lil White and Lytton argue about who's hotter. Who's hotter? You guys are the Brittany and Christine of the Fraser Valley. <laughs> I don't want to wag my finger at Lillouette. Did you guys take the monument? No, no. we absolutely did not. If you look you at the sky, why would we steal our monument? It was a real who's who of what the what? My mic pack. So then the idea was that me and Chris would go looking for the hotspot, so we jumped in his truck. So, Chris, what brought you to Lytton? Well, you want to know the truth? Yeah. I'm a forester and I travel all over the interior for work. Uh -huh. So I used to drive by Lytton thinking, Geez, I wonder what kind of lives there. Then I became like the head <laughs> And now I've been here 30 okay. years, right? OK. We found Bob and Becky parked on the side of the road with a boom truck, and they had the hot spot. Oh, yeah, there it is. Ironically, Chris told me the lesson of this little morality play is that Lytton is a place where people trust each other. If you talk to other people, say, I don't like living in a small town because everybody knows your business. It's because everybody knows your business that they trust you and you trust them. Because the currency in the world is not dollars, it's trust. After one more costume change, we could finally begin the toonie toss. Yeah, it's just kind of a combination of horseshoes and curling. The winner of this charity event is Lytton. And crazy as it all seems, you can't mess with Chris's logic. Because it's all marketing, right? The Fraser River is not silty, it's exfoliating. <laughs> I think if we could just get a swim up bar on the Thompson River, <laughs> you guys would be laughing. <laughs> I love dirt bikes. I fell in love with dirt bikes when I was seven years old, but I didn't have one. When other kids were pretending to be soldiers or superheroes, I was pretending to be a dirt bike. <laughs> nee, 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 nee. <laughs> well, like doing donuts at their knee. I went up into the mountains to talk to Naomi Peters. She formed the Res Riders dirt bike group and is probably the coolest mom around. I used to beg and plead with my parents so that I could go ride a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. But you obviously fully support it. We have no rec center. Yeah. And we've been here for, I've been living here for eight, 19, 20 years now, and there's still no rec center. So we just took it upon ourselves and just do it for our kids. This is my beast. Your beast. Great. I got to go out with those guys, which was great for me. Uh, Paul White was there, and he was helping us out. If you come up here, you're, you're definitely a committed dirt bike rider. Yeah. From Vancouver, it's three hours. The views, you're up to 7,000 feet, and you can see the, you know, just the whole area. It's amazing. And now Lytton's back on the map for its unbelievable backyard, which I got to explore with Naomi's son, Davis, and his buddy, Troy. Are you ready to ride? I'm ready to ride. Yeah. Up there. We were 7,000 feet in the mountains. The smell, just the smell of the forest. You know, after there's been a light rain and you got a mouth full of pine cones and mosquitoes. Oh, <laughs> just love that. It was great. I told the guys my favorite part of dirt biking has always been stopping for a chat. Yeah, this is pretty great out here. You got a pretty killer wheelie, Braden. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> And it's standing on the pig's wheelie. I wish I could do that. <laughs> it's practice. No, it's too late for me to learn now. <laughs> and it's educational. I went tumbling down the hill on my arse. It wasn't fun. And I learned valuable lessons in physics and gravity. <laughs> and looked up just in time to realize my bike had decided to rejoin me. Anyway, back to the good part. You guys stayed up pretty good. Yeah. No one ditched, did they? Yeah. I was starting to feel like these guys thought I was lame. I'm, my forearms are exhausted, and I think I need a puff on my puffer. Damn right, yeah. Brilliant! Another great guy I got to have a chat with, George Curzonstein, Big George. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He took me panning for gold. 
Now, the important thing is when you're panning, you want to pan correctly. You have to shake everything down. Beyond gold, this odd jobs man about town sees a mother load of unique positives in Linton's location. You can stand up on that hill up there and you can drive golf balls across the river. George told me that the Trans-Canada Highway comes through here in Lytton. In places, it, it, it's treacherous. Every now and then, unfortunately, you know, a freight truck will go off the road, yeah. and uh, the whole town benefits from a truckload of groceries. <laughs> One time, uh, a truck full of chickens capsized over there. Next week, every restaurant in town on the menu, chicken. <laughs> You could buy a side of beef for $75 at the side of the road, frozen. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. One time a truck went over with lumber. Oh, I don't know how many times I used the lumber in the hotel, saved the hotel a pile of money. I got a feeling at the first snowfall of every year, you guys are out by the highway with fingers crossed going, come on, beer truck. Come on. George's love for Lytton is ju just exploding out of him. It, it, it's, it's inspirational. We have so much here to offer. I mean, uh, gold panning, hiking, mushroom picking, fishing, rock hounding, just sitting on top of a mountain and watching eagles. But George had all kinds of great, funny stories to tell. I heard your nickname was Crazy George. It was for years. And were you a crazy guy, or? Well, uh, uh, harmless crazy. Yeah. This is the bridge Big George jumped off. On a dare. Three times. You know, when people jump off bridges and, and, and walk barefoot in snow and wear shorts all winter and, and a t-shirt, that could be construed as crazy. An archaeologist by training, since winding up in Lytton, George has fronted a band, run a video store, and worked at the mill. Once the sawmill went down, that was the end of it. And then the economy just totally started to die. Get George talking about Lytton for 10 minutes, and you'll realize that he's still crazy, crazy in love. I love this place. If you don't brag about it, no one will know about it. You know, guys, Lytton is a town that was once defined by its location. The deep end, that's yeah. where all the heavy materials will settle, right down into here. Okay. But now, I can see it's the people who are important. And you're washing all the silt. And again, the gold goes down to the bottom. The hot weather, the rivers, the mountains, the mushrooms, the gold. The location is just the gravy. Now that's gold. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we got gold! Stupid. Oh, right, <laughs> let's not tell anybody. That's actually, that's, qu that's really quite a nice pile of gold. Lynn had been teaching me to look for the opportunities where you are. And one had been staring me in the face, and it was time to face up to it and face it face to face. Welcome to the Thompson River. Very large volume river, as you can see here. I never understood the attraction to whitewater rafting. It seemed so dangerous to me to go on, uh, on the fastest, most uncontrollable water you could possibly find. Is there maybe start with some meanders? Is there any, like, whitewater meanders? <laughs> Bernie started out here in 1973, and these are the days before liability insurance or common sense. <laughs> it's the biggest employer in town now. The front of the boat is going to come completely out of the water. I'd almost guarantee that today. His boys, uh, Braden and Andy, took me out. Tell my mom I died doing something stupid. <laughs> I got covered in water. I was soaking wet. And actually, that was a good thing, because I was so scared. I thought, if I pee in my wetsuit, now nobody will notice. <laughs> the next set of rapids, Holy freak, mother of God! I realized peeing in my wetsuit was the least of my concerns. <laughs> That's when it all made sense to me. Sitting right there in that raft with love in my heart and pee in my pants. I realized I was starting to do what the locals had been doing all along. I was starting to enjoy surviving Lytton. Okay, one more. Everybody shout, come Sheen. Made it. Made it. Justifying. 
Linton is a town that was once defined by its location, but there's a lot of smart ideas going on out there. Bernie Fandridge sells the excitement of the river. Ken Wong, if you can sell grass seed and restaurant supplies in a grocery store, you got something going on up there. Chris O'Connor created a monument to Linton's hotspot status and gets people to literally throw money at it. George's love for Linton is just exploding out of him. Beautiful! <laughs> Ken Glasgow's big, beautiful, bizarre museum. I figured out it's all about making where you are and what you've got count. When I'm walking through the natural beauty of British Columbia, cascading waterfalls, huge Douglas firs, I usually think to myself, this place could use a pair of metallic breasts. <laughs> You know, right before I came over to the school today, uh, my mom called me for the first time since I got to BC, and she said, uh, how's it going in Lytton? I said, oh, Mom, Lytton is great. I rode the rapids, climbed to the top of a motorcycle, struck gold down by the river, and solved the case of the missing hotspot. She said, what on earth are you talking about? I said, Mom, I'm talking about Lytton, British Columbia. Thanks so much, everybody. You've been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> the real essence of it. He's super, very, very sharp. I can hardly wait for the TV version. Hope he didn't in his wetsuit, actually. <laughs> yes? Yeah. They're great, yeah. They're really funny. Those are people we all know, and you got them right on. Laughter is like therapy, yeah. Should be more of it in the world.